You're listening to The Pittsburgh Pile Driver. What the hell is that? Podcast. Uh, it's Thursday Thursday on the Pittsburgh Pile Driver Podcast. I don't know what that means to you, but it will mean something different for everybody. For me, for me. For what? For me, it means lots and lots of water. I am going to do some podcasting with you fine folks tonight, as well as the other three idiots that generally show up on Thursdays for this uh, dumb, stupid show. I hope you all enjoy it, because we're going to talk wrestling, and, uh, you know, that's what we do. I am uh, one of your four hosts, Ransom the Kragen, and I am joined by Tiger Mom Tom, Poot the Bard, and the best damn chooserweight champ that there ever was bow down everybody to the lord and savior of the pittsburgh Padre podcast the ruler of the galaxy mike tom beef lactus <laughs> nope you're stupid beef lactus beef lactus beef lactus there we go god almighty <laughs> do you ever want to be able to have one of those superpowers where you could like instantly teleport and just smack someone and then teleport back to where you were and they were just <laughs> like hey what just happened? And then you can call up on the phone and be like, hey, you feel that? It was me, dickhead. Oh, so that's what that is. Okay. Shut up, Jesus. you big dumb bastard. Go stir your oh, fucking fuck. Mrs. T's. I'll, I'll stir them. <laughs> Listen, you can go ahead and try and use Mrs. T as an insult, but it ain't gonna fucking work because Mrs. T is a fucking Pennsylvania institution. Just like the Pittsburgh Pile Driver podcast. Hi, everyone. It's a Pennsylvania institution. So, so our greatest... No, our greatest champion, our greatest champion in the world. What's our standings? I'm tired. I didn't do them. I'm Who cares? So we don't need them right tired. now. WrestleMania is coming up. We'll do it after WrestleMania, and uh, everything will be copacetic at that point. Why do we need standings immediately here and now? I want to know. <laughs> I'm interested. Ooh. There's high stakes here. No, you'll figure it out later. You know what you should have done is you should have kept a dumb little book beside you with all of your picks in it like these other two idiots. And calculated it out because that's how fucking important it is. I got to keep my little book with a little diary, my little notes. And I, little, 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 little. You know, I, this is my version of like fantasy football. So, you know, other people have that. Beef has fantasy football. You live a sad this. little life, my friend. And oh, that's right. Fuck, that got real. This, the Kragen, the Kragen has me all feisty in the trousers and I'm going to, I'm, I'm laying it out for you. I'm going to let you have that one. In the you can't do anything about it anyway. The Kraken, <laughs> the, the Kraken, by the way. The Kraken. That's the COVID variant that's out right now, and that's what I have. I have the Kraken. Thank sounds you very like, much. Sounds like a fucking scent of Old Spice deodorant. Hey, man, I didn't name it. I didn't name it. One of these dummies, and one of these, sci these dummy scientists named the version of COVID that's going around right now, the Kraken. But in any case... I am your host, uh, Captain Davy Jones, because Whoa. I control the Kraken. Are we wrestling? Rolling, rolling, rolling. R rolling. Um, yeah. So, uh, what do we think about Revolution Boys? Good show. You know, I, I was, I, I had some doubts. I was really doubting the car. Oh wait, no, that wasn't me. That was somebody else. <laughs> Who was that? Maybe. <laughs> oh. I, th I think I, I think I think it was a certain galactic overlord. I don't I don't know what you're talking about. I he doesn't I've, make I've mistakes. Been, I've been he I've been pimping this card. Choices. Now, to be fair, I you know, I did turn this around last week, uh, and I did say that I you know was starting to see some sparks in it, and uh, you know everything else. So I you know I it, it was I and I mean. Huh? I I will give the devil his due here. Uh, I was very down on the tag team match, which actually proved to be kind of a fun little aside. I enjoyed um, the tag team match. I thought it was I thought it was quite fun. Yeah, yeah. I uh, you know I you you said it, and now I can't unsee it. That you know Jeff Jarrett untethered from like backstage politicking untethered from like having the book and everything like he is having a resurgence and having a blast 
I, I would I would dare to... say that he's probably having the most fun now that he ever has. Because at this stage in his career, like he's not he's not fighting for the top spot, you know, building like his legacy. Young, like he's not, yeah. Doing when that. you're a young guy and you're thirsty for the business, like you're fighting to get on top and you always have to be great. And you always have to be on your game and you can't be hurt because if you get hurt, someone else is going to take your spot. Like he's at that age where he can just go into the ring and just have fun. And I, and I said this to beef and the other guys when we were watching revolution, it just looks like Jeff Jarrett is just loving what he's doing. Yeah, because man. even though he's supposed to be a heel, he at the camera catches him at times. And when he has that smile on his face, it doesn't look like one of those like shitty heel smiles. It looks it looks genuine. Like he looks like he has a genuine smile on his face. Like he just appreciates the fans he loves what he's doing and he's just having a great time it's and that gives me a lot of good warm and fuzzies being able to see somebody go out there and just you know what just have a having a blast at it because so many people you know have have had bad experiences in wrestling and like (coughs) have like i wish i could have done this i wish i could have done that like in the end you know i wish it would have been this way but like jeff jarrett is probably this is probably his last run, I would imagine, and he's having his last run alongside people like uh, Jay Lethal. Yeah, who, I mean, good lord, he's one of the most underutilized talents ever uh, in AEW. But in any case, like he gets to tag with Jay Lethal, he gets to go out and have fun. So, like, good on Jeff Jarrett. That's that's the way right there. If I was a wrestler, that's the way I would want to end my career. Dude, I would and- want to end my career around a bunch of young guys helping those young guys get over and just having a blast and he looks really good doing it he does well he does i was super impressed to see jeff yeah. jarrett like perform the way he did now i mean <coughs> did, did you know did he go did he go completely nuts like a lot of the younger talent obviously not the man's not there but oh uh, he hung he didn't feel like Oh, okay. No. We're gonna just put this this uh, you know legend of the business in here, and he'll do a spot or two. It was kind of like when we saw Sting come back for his first match in AEW. We were like, okay, Sting's not gonna really hang, and he hung. Like he yeah. he he went he he was in there, and he was you know scrapping. And like you said, seeing Jeff Jarrett smile like that and like look around, he looks like. He looks like he wants to look at literally everyone in the match and go, guys, how fun is this? <laughs> like, you know, just like, guys, aren't we having fun? Yeah, punch me. Bam. You know, like it, 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 it's nice to see. And, and also just to throw in, because like at the, at the beginning there, um, I thought that that show was fucking great. I had a great time. <clears throat> there were no matches that were like snoozers or shower matches as if you will. It was, it was fun. And it was really, it was entertaining. And that Iron Man match, though, fuck me, so good. Probably the best Iron Man match I, I can remember in a long time. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think if, um, was Gargano part of an Iron Man match somewhere in NXT? I'm trying to remember that that happened. Uh, yes, boy. I think so, but. But well, obviously, if, was, if we don't. Re- knock your socks off because you don't remember it. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like up until like up until recent memory, like with that with that one, and I and I'm trying to remember. I I feel like that that was a thing, but I but I can't remember for sure. So I don't know. Maybe it's just piss poor memory. If there was that one that was you know pretty good, like this one has has far surpassed anything, um, because it was it was entertaining to me the whole way through. Like obviously, you know the first. Uh, the first, what, I don't know, say 10 to 15 minutes. I'd say that even the first five minutes, you know, MJF was kind of just, you know, killing a little time and fucking getting out of the ring and this and that, which you kind of expected. As you do, yeah. Uh, yeah, as you should. And as he should, being the heel, you know, going into this and everything like that. Um, but, man, the rest of the time, you know, there not not a whole lot of rest holds. Um, it, it was uh, the, the biggest thing for me was the creativity of it 
I've I've never seen I've never seen somebody in an Iron Man match purposely get a DQ with a low blow to then hurry up and get get two quick pinfalls back to back on their opponent like that. That to me was like one of the one of the biggest things I'll I'll that you'll remember from this whole match. Just the creativity, how how different they did things compared to other Iron Man matches that have come before. Yeah. And then obviously yeah, and then and then obviously the the end of it and everything like that. You know, it they they go beyond the 60 minutes and MJF still, you know, uh you know does heal things at the end and fucking uses the <coughs> uses the oxygen tank to bash, you know, bash him in the head and everything. So he still so he still does heal tactics to get the win. But after that, man, uh, you know, if if anybody didn't, um, if there's anybody that didn't watch the the media scrum, I definitely suggest going back and checking it out at least for the MJF part, because he said it. He's like, he's like, you know, who's who's gonna fuck? What do you have to say now? You th- you said you thought I couldn't go in the ring. I just proved that to you. You know, I'm the best on the microphone, best in the ring, this and that. Like it, there's literally close to no holes in his game right now. Yeah, and I mean, you know, like I said, one of the big knocks I hear about him, and and it's not like a loud knock, but it, it's still something that that I've heard um, resonate, is that uh, he he he's not as good in the ring as he should be, and I I think we could put that to bed. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is absolutely on another level right now, uh, and and like I'm not trying to like. You know, because WWE and, and, and AW are apples and oranges right now. But like, man, like when you when you look at the two world champions, it's hard to say that they're not that they're both not the complete package in two different ways. Um, but yes, absolutely, MJF is coming into his own. Um, and it's honestly, very, it's very reminiscent of when you think back in the day and. Uh, all the times uh whenever you know like flair held the championship and he was the big heel uh doing shit back then and it was hard it was hard to poke holes in his game that's uh, you know um if you want to if you if you want to find something to compare it to but regardless yeah that means like you said total package man and i mean honestly like that is kind of the theme of the pay-per-view was talent coming into their own um, you know, we have Jungle Boy, Ricky Starks, Hangman Page, The House of Black, The Guns, Wardlow, Jamie Hayter, MJF. The youth movement is alive and well in AEW. That pay-per-view mm-hmm. was um, a statement. That was a statement. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and they know that they have to capitalize, <coughs> you know, on, 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 on what they have right now. Because right now, um, you know, they, they absolutely have the best thing going um, in, in terms of youth. Uh, now, I mean, you know, all, all due respect, I think that Triple H is absolutely working, going to be working some magic with the Performance Center. Uh, because, you know, again, apples and oranges, it's not fair that WWE has the fucking Performance Center. And uh, they got, you know, AEW has, like, QT's fucking ragtag band of misfits. Oh. But, like, you know, it, it's... Uh, I think I think right now, AEW's youth is on display. And uh, I, you know, couldn't be more excited. I think that they have the right people in the right places. Um, you know, I, you know... I, Weird things happened on Dynamite, but uh, you know they I, they they, they got to turn the page a little bit. I was gonna um, I was gonna ask if we were, if there was more than we were gonna touch on the pay per view if we were gonna get into that because uh, oh, I heard some interesting yeah, things. <laughs> absolutely, uh, I personally sorry hydrating. Um, <laughs> I thought bless you that the uh, death match was incredible. Um, AEW, so death matches, ironically, are something that AEW does really well. 
And I know beef, like, yeah, well, they bleed enough. Yeah, I, I get it. I, I get it. And, but, like, you know, I, I thought, as a guy who, you know, um, took part in some tape trading back in the day and, like, watched the original Mick Foley death matches over in Japan where he became king of the death match, um, you know, I'm... I am appreciative of that medium as an art form, and I think if done well, uh, it, it 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 can be really a, a fun sight. And I think that Moxley and Hangman absolutely did that on uh, on, on Sunday night. So I think I, it's so hard to pick matches of the night because you know obviously everyone's like, oh man, the Iron Man match was the best of the night, dude. And of, and of course, but of it, course it's great, but like. I don't know, man. Like all things being equal, the death match was right up there too, and so was the six man match. Well, it's it's hard to compare, you know, those different types of matches because, like we've stated before, AEW, uh, and not and this isn't a, a knock against WWE by any means, but AEW, uh, you know, does a really good job of giving you different types of matches because, um, you know, compare comparing the Iron Man match to say the death match, two totally different beasts there. Same as comparing even the death match to <clears throat> the six man match where there was a lot more high spots and things like that. We're comparing, you know, that to the jungle boy match, the women's triple threat. They were all, they were all a little bit something different to them. Um, yeah, man. And that, that's exactly, I think what AW has going for it is that it's not just same plus same plus same. Right. Equal event, and I mean, I love WWE. Obviously, I do. Um, and I'm excited as hell for WrestleMania. But I, you know, I, I think it's going to be a lot of the same style of matches. Right. Not that that's a terrible thing, but I think that AEW does well with like giving you um, a charcuterie board of wrestling versus like a big fat stupid buffet. Like they're both great, <laughs> but like sometimes you prefer one to the other. I said if you right. if, if you want to equate it to storytelling, like in my opinion, and right now at least the way it is, WWE is reading you Harry Potter, okay? Mm -hmm. AEW is reading you Lord of the Rings. That's fair. That's, that's does that really make sense? Good, does that make Absolutely. sense? Absolutely. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, that's yeah. It's, it's a great it's a great analogy. Um, because AEW is giving you all the puffery and the shit, whereas WWE is a stripped down, like homogenized mainstream version. I dig that, man. That's a, that's a very, that's fucking twenty five beef beef coins of poot. Good Hell job. yeah! Hell yeah! All right, slap nuts. All right, slap nuts. Here's here's your standings. Thanks for thanks for giving me a chance to buffer these. All right, and I mean, you know, uh, you first call, of all, you call me slap nuts all you want. I got twenty five beef coins, man. The rest of this podcast is fucking <laughs> icing on the cake. The uh, c congrats to the man who picked Revolution Perfect. Oh, who was which that? Was Dave. Oh wow, Dave picked Damn. them all perfect, man. Pat allegedly came real close. <clears throat> so, here are your standings in total. Right now, leading the pack, I'm sorry to say, is Pat with 67 points. Fuck berries. Nipping his heels is Tiger Bomb Tom with 60 points. Sir. Close behind Tom, we have Jimmy with 59 points. Fuck. Dave with 58 points. And Poot with 56 points. <laughs> wow. Not outside the realm of believability oh, is yours no. truly at 50 points. That's kind of where the realm of believability kind of lost. It kind of stopped. <laughs> Yay, ransom giggle. Uh, Amber, <laughs> Amber, after... Talking her big game. Well, keep talking, Beef. Yeah, well, I'm going to keep talking. When you put fucking eight points on Danielson, fucking seven points on Moxley, and fucking six points on Joe. Yuck. 40 points is what Amber has total right now. <laughs> Ransom 
at 37. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. This fighting is, from behind. Keep fighting, man. This is what happens when you pick FTR, man. Like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they showed up. He's He wasn't it's wrong. Like, like, it's like... It's like Ransom, like, takes the ball bat and points to, you know, way out in left field in the middle of a bowling alley. Like, okay, you, you, you called a spot, but pick up the ball, buddy. Um, but and then finally. Foul. Then it's a foul ball dribble. And then finally oh, we have uh, Corey with 25 points who chose not to participate in AEW. Oh, so Corey. Um, we have two nights of Mania coming up in just a few weeks. So, plenty of time, plenty of opportunities to try and get this right. Uh-huh. Gotta hope but, that Amber uh, rubs off on her husband there and, uh, you know, gives her some of her magical picks. Yeah. I don't want to hear about your, I don't want to hear about your P3 fanfic. Anyway, keep going, Beef. At Uh-oh. this point, I, I'm, I'm kind of rooting just for Tom as much as I fucking hate to say it because I don't want Pat to win because if Pat wins, God help us. Listen. We'll never hear the fucking end of it. If, hey if guys, remember that time that I was the champion? Here's a here's Listen. a slump to trumps. Listen Damn it, to, Pat. To be fair, oh. if there's if there's anyone outside of the podcast, I know this. I know beef is going to be enraged Stop when I it. say this. No, li- no, think about it. Somebody that sends in questions every oh. single week, constantly supplying us with a stump the chumps. If there's anybody outside of the four of us. That that deserves to hold it even for a short amount of time. Short. It it it'd be him. Tom, so. I'm gonna Tom, you know what? I, I appreciate your candor, but I'm gonna get you some fucking Burt's beeswax for your lips. They must be chapped for kissing so much ass. The fucking like the one that I'm cheering fucking for shit on Tom all night today? Like what the fuck is going on out, here? Outside of Tom. Yeah, I, outside I, of I Tom. Get the fucking sass from Ransom. I wasn't expecting it from Poot. Hey man, you know every once in a while you gotta be sassy boy. Anyway I'm the, an equal opportunity sasser. That's true, sassy he is. Boy, outside of That's <laughs> something different. You know oh. no, I'm the, He's the, just a bar toy. Bar toy. Well, is different. that a loot? Uh, the um huh? uh Stop it. the like the one that I'm cheering for outside oh, of Tom, yes. yes, Tom, I'm I'm cheering for you. I'm rooting for you here, and I'm I'm not far too. back there. I could I could make up some ground, but the one I'm cheering for, honestly, I'm gonna give a shout out to Jimmy. Stop it, yeah, man, Hi, Jimmy, yeah, yeah, and and I mean it, it's it's stop it. I mean says. I like to pretend that I have a chance here, but it's 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 logistically a five person race, um, you know, with Dave in there as well, so it's. It's gonna be fun um but yeah uh so that you know um that uh segue notwithstanding uh revolution was a really good event and um yeah man you know i <laughs> just like ransom says man like it aw never disappoints and uh anytime that i in the future say to myself hmm i really don't know about this card um my my buddy Sean said it to me this way. He said, AEW does a pretty lousy job of like promoting their pay per view mm-hmm. uh, and like building, but the pay per views are outstanding. Yeah. WWE does a great job of fucking putting on a great like build up, and then sometimes you just, it's, it's a wet fart. So. And then those the- wet farts are getting few and few and fewer far between, to be perfectly honest with you. I understand yeah, there's, always, there's always moments. But like, it's it's getting there. Like they're getting there to where they're taking their Pepto Bismol regularly. <laughs> yeah, man. So, um, coming out of Revolution, uh, staying on the AEW trend here, uh, Dynamite was good, somewhat questionable. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a rebranding of the All Atlantic title, which I think is fine. Uh, to the international title, which I actually think is better than the Atlantic title. Um, Orange Cassidy is defending the international title next week uh, against Jeff Jarrett. And uh, I would not be shocked if Jarrett wins it. Wow. Yeah. I'm here for uh, it, honestly. I, I, um, I, I, when wow. I, when I found out the results of the, of dynamite, um, 
I kind of questioned one thing that they did. Which is Powerhouse Hobbs, right? Yeah, because my... Hobbs. Like, yeah, Hobbs. So, all right, for, first of all, I thought it was actually interesting. I don't... Again, you know, I mean, you can do anything with social media and spin it the way that you want to. Uh, but uh, allegedly, um, that uh, Wardlow's, Wardlow's car got broken into and his gear, ring gear and his title got stolen. Uh, and my oh. first thought was... Oh no, you got the Jericho syndrome. Um and that sucks. Um because it's to what to what Joe Samoa Joe replied, anybody know how to get glass out of a balaclava? Asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, I mean Well no. done, Samoa Joe. Yes, well done. I supposedly <laughs> that, that was real, but I mean we'll never know unless you're part of you know, part of the, the event yourself. But getting back to it, why why they had Wardlow take it off of Joe just to just to turn around and put it right back, you know, put it on Powerhouse Hobbs is well, uh, I, and that, and I admittedly I did say, I know I said it I I said it to you guys I think after the fact or during the event that if there was one title that could or should get hot potatoed around it would be that TNT you know championship because that's your television title and uh logistically if you're if you're defending it every single week on tv statistically i should say not logistically statistically See, i view that as more of like the tier two title and then the international title as the tier three maybe i'm backwards on that I know, I'm, like... I'm with you on that i'm with you on that so, so like i i feel like their tnt title while you know Obviously, being a television title, I is it, more like the Intercontinental. Agreed. Um, I okay, so I'm I'm back and forth on this. Uh, you know, Wardlow won so definitively, he passed out Samoa Joe and Samoa Joe's own hold. Right. Uh, like that. I can't think of another time where Joe's passed out ever in his career. Um. So, like, that's pretty fucking definitive. So you have Wardlow being a house of fire. I feel like the TNT title is kind of limiting to him. I don't feel like Wardlow's a mid-carder. And I feel like having that TNT title on him limits who and where who he can face where they can he can face them at i like hobbs here i think that they're capitalizing on the hot hand and they did it in a way to make hobbs look decent and wardlow smell like a rose because Q qt marshall got involved and sure. like it was a big dumb fucking spot <laughs> that really actually looked kind of bad um, the way Wardlow landed with his fucking neck, like you know, the the breakaway panels in the um, in this section, his neck kind of caught on one of the breakaway panels, and I'm like, oh, that looks like it sucked real bad. Um, I haven't heard anything if he's like hurt, hurt or anything. I don't think he is, but like he, you know, QT came out and and helped Hobbs win for whatever fucking reason. I, you know, QT Marshall is one of those guys that is Marshall. just a hanger on. That's his name. It's okay. QT Marshall, buddy. That's not how they've been pronouncing it. Oh, has he has he changed it? Is it part of the gimmick? I believe so. Okay. Never mind. So, I, like, I recant. He, I recant my, my statement. He, he feels kind of like a hanger-on at this point. Uh, a, a relic of a bygone era, if you will. Um, oh. I, and I, I, just, I just don't understand why you... You know, because Powerhouse Hobbs has been on fire as of late. And I think that QT kind of smolders that a little bit. Um, but, like, I'm fine with Hobbs being champion. I think it was the right call. It, you're 100% right. It's weird that they hot potatoed it back and forth and back and forth. But it is what it is. Um, and then uh, FTR, you know, talks about wanting to face the guns. And um, uh, Dax said on Twitter or whatever, oh, you know, nothing has changed with the contract status. They're still 
you know, viably free agents, blah, blah. I don't know, man. Dax is fucking working. That's all the fucking time. Who knows anymore with Dax? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, and then like uh, something I thought was really fucking cool. Um, the elite came out to stand off with, uh, with the Jericho appreciation society. And, um, you know, Kenny was like, Hey man, we stayed out of your lane and you stayed out of ours and we just let you do your thing. But like when you start saying that you have the best, you know, the, the best, you know, um, a group of people here, you're wrong. And then like the lights went down and the house of black came out and stood on the ramp in between them. Um, uh, buddy and, uh, um, Malachi facing the ring and uh, Brody <laughs> facing the, the stage with the elite on them. And so that sets up a, a, a match next week, uh, triple threat for the trios tag team titles of the house of black, the elite and the Jericho appreciation society, which will be off the fucking chain. Well, it, it's wow. going to be a really good match, but do you think, is there a realm of possibility that they're going to hot potato like they did with that other belt? No, because I was like, that would just kneecap house of black. No. Yeah. I mean, House of Black has been middling for so long, and like Al uh, Malachi middling Black and middling and Malachi Black's been like Smoking stuck the in the Thank fucking you. middle for so long, unjustly, and uh, I I I think that this is their way of making it up to them. I I hope that they don't take those belts off of them. And and honestly, you know, I I got kind of hyped because I saw a post by Don Callis where um, it, it may have been Kenny, I'm not sure, but basically it was Don and Kenny standing together, and Kenny in 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 his suit saying, you know, now you know now now you're all in trouble because now we're focused singularly singularly focused, and I'm like yes. Like, get back to, like, the Kenny Omega Dream Match Tour. Let's get the Young Bucks back in the tag team division. So this might be, like, the Elite's, I won't say swan song, in the trios division. But it's but, a uh, separating, like, getting them out of, right. gracefully stepping out of that division. Precisely. Give us one more banger and then, you know, move along. It's, it's time for, time to see Kenny versus Wardlow and, you know, Kenny versus Joe and... Kenny, Kenny versus, versus Danielson. MJF. And, this yeah. is the one thing about AEW that does drive me a little a little bonkers <laughs> is that they have this match here, which for all intents and purposes should be on one of their biggest, if not their biggest, pay per views. Is is the Elite versus the House of Black versus Jericho Appreciation Society? Mm -hmm. Like that should be absolutely a pay-per-view quality match and it should be on pay-per-view and that I don't know like it's nice that they give the weeklies that much focus to put on a match like this on the weeklies but at the same time it's like man like oh oh it's this, what they do man oh. it, you know Hobbs versus Wardlow, I think Hobbs. one could argue, could Hobbs. be could be a, a a pay per view match. Um, you know, uh, Darby versus Joe. There, there's a couple of matches. Like I, the AEW likes to put on pay per view matches in in television every few weeks. You know, to keep the viewership on dynamite, and I'm absolutely here for that. Um, I don't I don't think you run the risk of burning out. Um. Because no matter what, like, even if you're watching a, a classic on television, if you're still getting those commercial interruptions, even if even with AEW's little picture in picture, like, it still takes away from the match. That's why pay-per-view matches will always be special. I got I to gotta say that uh, one thing I'm excited for uh, coming out of Revolution and for all intents and purposes from what I've heard, um that happened on dynamite is ruby soho with this heel run um i heard i heard it was really well done and it kind of made things make sense as far as the whole uh soraya and uh, <laughs> storm stuff that whole storyline that was going on because 
I was honestly a little confused with them. Like, like why? Like, okay, yeah, you're a heel now. Okay, you're you're grouping up together, but give me the why. What was the uh, what what what, what the, was the um the the like manifesto? There's not a hard and fast. There's 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 not a hard and fast. I, uh, Tom is talking about how like Ruby came out and talked about how the fans kind of like turn um, their noses up at Soraya and Ruby and everything. Uh, the old like, the old chestnut of you don't respect me. What? Yeah, yeah, I mean more more like you know you fans are the ones who did this. You clamored for Soraya return and you can't you know turned on her the first chance you get. You clamored for me to be here and you turned on me the first chance you could get. I mean realistically, the answer is because. You're not stuck with WWE booking, who is like you know, in grounded in fucking cement, you know. Uh, looking at just as an example, the Roman Sammy thing, like it's cemented. The, the whole thing's been in fucking cement that Cody or that that um, Sammy was never going to get a Mania match. Nothing was going to fucking change that. Short of the fucking crowd actually storming the ring, a la what they pretended to do with the Yes movement, like nothing was going to be changing that. Uh, whereas AEW, Tony's like, oh fuck, you know, like Jim Hader's getting a lot of cheers, Britt Baker's getting a lot of cheers, as opposed to like breaking them up now, let me capitalize on this while they're hot, make them the faces. Let these ladies be healed because obviously they can handle it and they can carry it, and they are. Uh, I don't see a problem with it. Right. No, the, but what I'm saying is, is that it with with Ruby's promo that she had, it it kind of it kind of just you know solidified things a little bit more as to, as sure. to as to the why. That's all. Right. You know. I mean, it, granted, even if there was some you know typical heel 101 stuff in there you know she knows what she's doing you know you say this to garner this reaction everything like that but when you think about it there's a lot of truth to what she was saying too oh she, absolutely she's, she's not are, wrong daniel bryan hit on the hand head on the head fucking four years ago fans are fickle man yeah like if if you know they could be cheering for you one night and then the next night be super over you that's just how that goes um, and I and I think that in truth, it's probably the the best part is probably somewhere in the <laughs> middle. It's not being Tony Khan where you're placating to the fans so flippantly uh, and doing things like you know the, the like like you know powerhouse getting getting the uh, the title almost on a whim because of how he's been ho over recently. And and being stalwart like WWE and saying, well, no, these are our plans. The fans be damned. I think the truth is somewhere in the middle, you know, you can hear what the fans are saying, merge that with your best ideas, and boom, you you should have success. That's where you. Right. That's where you get the the like. Okay, we hear you, but give us a chance here. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like, well, like the whole Roman and Sammy thing, like they, you know, like, OK, I don't think I, I don't think anybody, especially especially after the Rumble, especially once Cody won the Rumble, it was definitely cemented. But I think one could argue that before that, um, you know, there might have been a viable chance that. You could have had a, a Sammy versus Roman match at Mania. Not to say that Sammy would have gone over, but it was at least within the realm of possibility, I think. Now, obviously, you know, what the fans want was Sammy, you know, getting getting his, you know, his one up on Roman and the bloodline and everything like that. Are they going to get it in a you know one on one match at Mania with Sammy and Roman? No, but they got that at a uh, at Elimination Chamber. And even though Sammy lost, he still you know he still he didn't go over, but he got over real well. It was it was one of the best you know one of the best singles matches uh, that that I've seen Roman have with you know with anybody in this whole long historic reign. Um, but with WWE's plans, 
there's the happy medium. Sammy's still getting one over on the bloodline and Roman and stuff because, you know, we're setting up for him and KO to do, you know, to take the uh, tag titles off the Usos. So Sammy still gets, you know, some sort of moral victory, even though he doesn't get the world heavyweight title. So, you know, happy medium there. I, in my opinion, it's it's listen. It's it's not exact exact. It's the middle of the road. It's not exactly what what the what the fans are you know going to clamor for. Where they're like, oh, we want Sammy a champ. We want Sammy a champ. <laughs> we just and wanna, I mean we've, we've... we just want to see Sammy get that feel good moment. We want we want to see uh, him. I don't think that that's the tone and tenor of the IWC. I think I think the internet wrestling community wanted to see Sammy Zayn. At least face Roman at WrestleMania. Probably majority of them want to see him take one of his titles. But the, but um, you got with, 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 with stop. good reason. Because right. again, like you booked an amazing story. And again, I know that the story is not over. And I know that, you know, moving the story to Kevin and Sammy versus the bloodline is tying a lot of things together. And, and I, I get every last bit of it. I really do. But, like, when you have such an amazing story that you c- – and then, like, you kind of, like, set something altogether different up for WrestleMania, expecting the fans to be like, oh, something new. I, you know, I – I – I and, and again, you know, first world problems, I, I, I just think that this thing kind of grew without WWE's necessary consent and – um you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think the fans would have been happy unless Sammy got a Mania match with with Roman at WrestleMania. That's but, that's my own two cents. Well, yeah, but here's the thing. You know, you got that's that's what the fans want. But then you have to stop and think. Now you're, you know, put yourself in, you know, Triple H and everybody else's shoes there. And I hate I hate to use the phrase, but I'm going to use it anyways. What's best for business? When, when you okay, when you when, but hold listen, on, hold on. But when listen. You, well, no, hold on. Let me finish. When you put it down on paper, Let me finish. who's going to who draw who potentially is going to draw more money on any given night? Cody me. Rhodes or Sami Zayn? OK, Cody. but, you're, but you, uh, so reportedly and, and I didn't want to get into WWE this late into the episode, but why the fuck not? Reportedly. Um, in in the fall, plans were still to have Roman do double duty at WrestleMania, one match against The Rock, one match against Cody Rhodes. That was like the plan. Uh, I don't know if if he was supposed to go over The Rock. That is over Roman uh, and win a title. I would hope not, but it would not shock me. I don't understand how you don't stay with that model and just say, well, fuck, rather than trying to shoehorn a guy who doesn't want to be here, (coughs) let's shoehorn a guy that's put this fucking story on his back for the last six months. Let's reward him. And and again, like, I am not saying the guy that doesn't want to be here. The The Rock. Oh, okay, got it. Sorry. I'm I'm not saying that Sami Zayn is going to outdraw Roman Reigns, but I am saying that in a perfect world, the end of the Sami Zayn bloodline story ends with Sami Zayn beating Roman Reigns for the title. But there's one other, there's one other small factor here. Well, maybe not so small with the whole bloodline storyline is that bloodline storyline the 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 bigger story like wasn't so Steiner much line? the bigger story wasn't so much sammy and roman it's more so sammy and jay because when you think about <laughs> it it was it, it was that constant struggle for sammy to try to gain jay's approval and and gain his you know his, give his, his thumbs up and then when finally you know when jay stood up for sammy at the whole council thing everything like that that the the Royal Rumble match at the end there, um, you know, whenever Jay walked out because he couldn't, and, you know, and then it, that I, to me, it, it makes. But what happened? They 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 pissed it away on Monday Night Raw. They had an opportunity to do something unique and outside the box, 
in having Jey Uso align with Sammy. And, like, the fans in Boston, who, you know, is a very smarky crowd, were absolutely there for it, man. They were like, yes, this is amazing, this is awesome, only to have Jey Uso super kick him. But now we're getting the Usos, and now we're going to get Sammy and Kevin. And that's great, predictability, yada, yada, yada. But, like, you know, again, leave your leave yourself room for an audible. Yeah, and I'm not saying, wrong, you know, that they need to be... Audible. I'm I'm not saying that they need to be changing things up three weeks before WrestleMania. That's a Vince McMahonism. <laughs> I don't think that that's good business at all. Agreed. I just think that as opposed to going with old and boring... Oh, you could have Wait, you, given. You, you talking about me? No, man. I'm talking about. Uh, he just old, tunes uh... out and just goes, "What? <laughs> you talking about me? Old, what the old and who? <laughs> talking, talking about old Hunter Hearst McMahon. Um, oh. I, you know, I think I think you had a chance to do something new and unique, and like they keep saying main event USO, and they kept. You know, words. Everybody came out that Jay Uso wanted to be like that. They wanted Jay Uso to be the next guy and all that. And I'm here for every little bit of that. Uh, I think that Jay Uso is the workhorse of the team. I think that Jay Uso is the better performer. I think that Jay Uso is probably the better Uso. I think that Jay Uso is the the HBK. All of that being said, I think you had an opportunity to do something special with that, and you just turned it into, you know. Wrestling Psychology 101, which isn't bad, but I think that you turned down something that could have been what? really, really neat. Well, what would it's they like, have done? It's like someone saying, here's a premium. It's like, oh, you want premium steak? We're going to be serving premium steak. Oh, all right. And you get like, it's like per, the most premium steak that Walmart offers. You know what I mean? Like, right. It's well, that kind exactly. of thing. But what, like, it's still how, great steak, but it's not the best thing yeah. so let, let let me follow your Ooh. line of thinking and if you did have jay align himself with sammy well then what happens to the tag titles uh sammy and solo they've defended them together before sammy and solo nope sorry jimmy and solo thank you thank you uh, yeah but then how do you make that how do you make that how do you make that make sense Easy food. from from the perspective they've that done it before J- that's that that's all you need to say is but that Okay, but Solo but, Sokoa has stepped in before. You know, I I get it, man. And and maybe you have Jay and Sammy versus Jimmy and Solo <laughs> in a ladder match Gross. to see who comes down with the belts. I do. You know, I there are any number of ways you could have Sammy versus Jay or Sammy versus Jimmy with Jay in his corner. You could have Jimmy versus Jay with Sammy in his corner. But take okay, there. now take take the fact of the whole take the fact of the bloodline out of this. If they did this, if they did this scenario with any other with any other team, would we be sitting here and saying, Oh wow, that's that's creative or we'd be yeah, saying, Yeah, but you like, can't or, say or, take or, the fact of the bloodline out of it because the bloodline is the big story yeah, here. That's what I'm but, saying. Like, yes, WWE has put together a great story that at the end of it will probably be satisfying with Sami Zayn and Kevin Owen beating the Usos for the tag team titles. Not as satisfying as Sami Zayn beating Roman Reigns for the title, but still satisfying nonetheless. It's a nice little paint by number situation. Great. But but oh. you don't make all the money in the world by doing paint by numbers. The greatest artists in the world have said <coughs> – exactly. The yeah. greatest artists in the yeah. world have Careful. said, I know what they're doing. I'm going to do something different. And I think that they had a chance. You have moments in time, and we've talked about this a little bit before. Pivotal moments in time in, in the wrestling world where, like, lightning strikes mm-hmm. and, and you know, one thing one way or another, the curtain call, for example. Something changed in that, and you create, you know, the butterfly effect. Austin 316. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, I think <laughs> that Monday night was one of – that could have been one of those pivotal moments where – they could have said, I know 
what the story that we're putting together is. And I know that Jimmy and Jay getting back together and Kevin saving Sammy is going to create a really nice picture. And it will. It totally will. But I think that they could have said, you know what? Let's get weird with it. Let's see what happens. And maybe Jay Uso snuffs out. Maybe we get to June and we're like, well, it was a bad decision. Or maybe we're sitting here next March saying, I can't believe the run that Jay Uso has been on since he sided with Sami Zayn. I, I just think that, you know, when afforded those kind of opportunities, you need to answer the bell. I mean, who's to say, though, coming forward the way that they are, that after this, you know, say, you know, assuming the Usos lose the titles, the bloodline kind of falls apart. Who's to say that going forward this way doesn't end up propelling Solo Sokoa? Because now, you know, come next March, we could be sitting here going, wow, I can't believe how well they've done with Solo Sokoa since the whole bloodline story ended. I mean, uh, yes, it, I too love them, Maga. Okay. You know, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not saying I'm, not talented. I'm, I'm saying that they've copied and pasted Lord. a character. I'm, I'm saying that they've copied and pasted a character <laughs> on top of him. They took what he was in NXT and they're like, nope, nope, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Now you're a MAGA. Go. Jeez. I'm waiting to be told I'm wrong. That's what I thought. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I, number one, I, uh, Whenever Umanga was around, Umanga. that was around Umanga. The- Umanga. Umanga. Who called him Umanga? Regal. I don't know. Regal. Yeah, that's Manga. right. Poor William Regal could not pronounce his name. Sorry, Tom. Go ahead. Or or Oscar's name, right? It, there's a lot of names oh, he couldn't get right. Poor regardless. William Regal. Yeah. Anyways, um, I wasn't around watching uh, during that time. Whenever he was prevalent, so I mean. I have I have nothing to compare to directly, but all I'm saying is you're proposing one scenario. I'm proposing another. You're saying what if? I'm saying what if? <laughs> I mean, anything could happen. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. I don't think that there is a scenario here where where Solo becomes the dominant force. Well, I I I think that this was a chance to where if they really wanted to back. Jay Uso as the next Roman Reigns, to be honest with you, um, that that they had their opportunity, and I think that that window closed. I'm not saying there's not going to be another window, and it may be open just as wide. I don't know. I'm just saying that you know, in perpetuity, I believe that this was a moment that they had a chance to. Oh, you bugger face. Do. I'm sorry, sorry, not you, the freaking <laughs> my freaking coat. Um, oh. I think I think that they had a chance to do something special and new, and they kind of uh, they 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 went with safe. And again, safe's not bad. Safe can lead to a nice match at WrestleMania. Well, safe's going to lead to the end of a good story that we've been uh, not not not. It's 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 like it's like those uh, RPGs where you have multiple endings. Okay. We're not getting the best ending at WrestleMania, but we're getting the pretty good ending at WrestleMania. Yeah, but you're talking about, you know, the possibility of Jay maybe going on run. Had they done this different? Had they done that different? You're you're talking about that. But if you think about it, him and Jimmy losing the titles and then, you know, having a falling out because they lost the titles to, to Sammy and Kevin gives more credence to him going on a singles tear, him getting a big push over the course of this next year. So I sure, mean, and that, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, you know, the, the opportunity may not be over. I'm not right. saying that, Oh, now, you know, there's, there's no chance that Jay Uso ever becomes a man of my star. I, I, I'm just saying that like the way did, uh, did, did you watch raw on, on Monday or, or see any clips of it or anything? I, I didn't see any clips. Okay. So, like, the way that the crowd reacted when Jay Uso chose Sami Zayn was nothing short of remarkable. Um, and, like, I, you know, 
part of me likes to wonder at that point, did they start having second thoughts? Oh, okay. we should have done things differently because honestly, the way that the crowd reacted was pretty incredible. They and, you know, again, I, I just think that they, you know, had had a chance and, and they, they missed this chance. There may be more chances. There probably will be more chances in the future, but they missed this specific chance. The the only uh, the, the biggest thing that I heard about with Monday Night Raw uh, was uh, Cena basically just verbally tearing down Austin Theory, which I I got to say, I mean, I, I know I got to get going here personally. Um, I I don't know why if you're if you're going to be trying to put Austin Theory, you know, build him up. I don't know why you have. Cena come out and literally just verbally dress him down. Like usually a baby face will, you know, say like, Hey, you're good, but dot, 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 or whatever this, and that. It, but Cena just like basically left it. Again, at, did you watch a promo or did you read reports of the promo? No, I, I heard it. I heard the promo. Okay. I heard, uh, cli- I heard clips of the promo. But basically you just, the, the promo in totality. Yeah. Like, like Cena just like his, fucking verbal thrashings right you but, but you saw clips not the program and not not the promo in totality right my, I, my I, point here is that is that you know the, the promo in totality i think cena said hey man you're great and you are absolutely gonna be the next thing but you're not there yet and i don't think you deserve a match with me like yes i i, I hear your point that he you know dressed him down but Here's what it was an in character dressing down. It wasn't like an assault. Well, and yes, and and Cena, you know, just Cena things, and probably don't went off the cuff with the whole. Uh, at least <laughs> I don't have to mic in, you know, crowd noise for my matches. Um, you know, because he's John Cena, that's what he does. But again, it's going to be all the sweeter when Austin Theory beats him at WrestleMania. So I think that that's where. I you just know. wish I wish Theory would have would have been able to get in some words in edgewise and and get a little bit of something back, but it was just all it was just all the John Cena show at that point. Like that's yeah. and yeah. I mean like that's kind of what I expected. Um, and because again, you know, Cena's the 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 face in theory. Uh, well, the face with theory in theory. Um, uh, we'll see. What? We'll see how Los Angeles treats him. Um, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm never sold as John Cena as a baby face. Uh, at, at best, I think he could get a 60, 40 split, uh, at, on any given night. I think that they're lucky that it was in Boston, Massachusetts. That's all I'm saying. But I agree. I think that Cena, you know, they, 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 they probably should have had it be a little bit more double-sided. Yeah. But I mean. Because if you're because if you're somebody who hasn't been watching Theory for long, when you're sitting here watching Cena completely tear him down, you don't you don't go like, oh, I want to see, I, I want to see this guy face John Cena. You're just kind of going like, okay, well, why? You know, if if you're somebody who doesn't, it reminds me a lot of Jericho and Fandango. Not that that went any place good, but like. It's very much the, the the same kind of like thing where Jericho was like, "You don't belong in my orbit, mm-hmm. but I'm going to give you a chance because I'm the greatest of all time." Well, and, and, it, and I I I get the same vibe, and and I think that's going to be the same scenario where you know, yeah, like you're you're absolutely right. People are going to be like, well, "What's what's the point? This is a foregone conclusion." And then whenever Theory beats Cena, everyone's going to be like, oh, wow, okay. Right. Oh, no, I mean, don't get me wrong. I I have no, uh, you know, no delusion uh, of Cena beating Theory. Like, I I absolutely, you know, I'm 100% on board with Theory going over and everything like that. I I, I see, you know, I I see what they're trying to do, but I'm just saying from, I don't want to say the the average casual. fan or casual. The, the, ca- the casual fan view that's and sometimes you have to you have to dress it down a little bit to grab the casual fan you know um to, to really 
make things work because it's those casual fans that if you gotta you know you gotta do something to make it work for them so they come back and become an invested fan but well and and again like it's it's not like wwe has to worry about buy rates all oh, right, right um you know they honestly could give a fuck less about wrestlemania i'm sure i i i, I know that that's not the case internally but like wrestlemania uh... more or less isn't their product it's I they they want it to be good because they want to have it for the sale, but like it's it's Peacock's problem now. Yeah. Oh. But speaking of Peacock's problem now, I I got nothing. Poot. <laughs> wrap us up. Uh, ra- <laughs> wrapping us up in a timely good night little <coughs> podcast. Good night. Wrapping us up in a nice little tortilla. Thank you for watching. Next episode coming soon. Ba da ba ba ba. That's the end of it. The fuck was that?